10 best books I've read according to Goodreads. I found this idea by watching a video on Benjamin's book club and he stole the idea from Criminoli who shamelessly took the idea from Jolene of Bookworm Adventure Girl and this idea has been going around booktube for a few years. I've seen Jack Edwards has done it, Alien Bookland has done it, maybe everybody apart from me has done this. Uh, I like the idea so I'm jumping on the wagon. My name is Jim, this is my channel Books, Reading and Stuff. If you want to join in you can go to your Goodreads page if assuming you're with Goodreads. If you're not, sorry, <laughs> can't do this. Go to your Red Books section and list the books, change it to list them by the rating from the highest to the lowest. If you want to see your worst books, you could also rate them from the lowest to the highest. The Goodreads rating is very subjective and a book with a higher rating doesn't isn't necessarily better than a book with a lower rating. For example, Moby Dick, often cited as the great American novel, on Goodreads you'll see it's rated at 3.55. ends with us however. Is this a better book than Moby Dick? Is rated at 4.16. I haven't read this so I can't judge the two by my own experience but which would you say was the better book? Also on Goodreads there's people who rate books without reading them. If we look at Prince Harry's Spare before it was even published it had a lot of ratings. Many were five Many were one. There was nothing much in between, which suggests that it's not a rating of the book. It's not about the quality of the book, but about the feelings of the raters towards Prince Harry. OK, I'll get down to my list now. Ninth equal, with a Goodreads rating of 4.57, I rated it 4, is Lost for Words by Derek Longdon. This is a memoir of his mother and it's funny and it's poignant and his mother has had a stroke and now she can't do what she likes doing best which is chatting with people and he remembers how she was before the stroke. Also ninth equal is Pool's Gold with a Goodreads rating of 4.57. I rated it as 4. It's a western. I find with the genre westerns they tend to have higher ratings. I think the fans of westerns tend to give them five stars, whether they're good, bad or indifferent. Uh, Paul's Gold is about a Secret Service agent, Sean Casey, who's working for the fledgling Secret Service and he's on the trail of some counterfeiters in Carson City in the Wild West. The, Sean Casey is very much like a Louis L'Amour hero. He's quick on the draw, he's good with a horse, and he's incorruptible. But unlike a Louis L'Amour novel, this was 776 pages, which I felt was much too long. Number eight is a book I expect many of you have read yourselves, with a Goodreads rating of 4.58. This is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third in the Harry Potter series. And this was as far as I got with the Harry Potter series. Like with series, as you go further in the series, the ratings tend to go up because the people who are following the series are invested in the series and the people who didn't like it will leave it at the first book. I should have left it at the first book. Uh, for me, this was a three-star book. Uh, I didn't like the character development of Harry Potter and there were some things like the Time Turner, which I thought was a wasted device, but that's my opinion. Goodreads crowd mostly liked it. When Ollie of Criminoli did his list, he left out books with less than 1,000 ratings. I haven't done this. At sixth equal on my list with a rating of 4.62, my own rating was 4, but there were only 8 ratings for this book, a book called Mannequin, which is a post-apocalyptic novel set in Cascadia, which is... Uh, a domed city in the Pacific Northwest. I don't remember much about it now. Also with sixth equal with 4.62, but this one I rated five stars and this was 
in 2022, one of my top three reads was Perilyn Decline by Pei Veo. Pei Veo was a booktuber. I'm not sure if he still is a booktuber. I haven't seen him post anything for a long time. He's from Canada. And Perilyn Decline was this amazing story about this woman who leaves the hospital and she's lost her memories and it's about how she finds her memories and it's tied in with the myth of Sisyphus. There's a lot of philosophy, there's this mystery, she's trying to recover her memories and I just really liked the book. I gave it five stars of course um, but there's only 16 ratings on Goodreads. I think it deserves a far bigger audience. When I listed my books by rating I had this strange thing where Iggy at 4.64 was placed lower than Savage Skies at 4.63. Uh, Savage Skies by Cat Ross is fifth then on my list, 4.63. This is a fantasy tale about Aquietus, somebody who helps the spirits of the dead move to the afterlife, as it were. And I really enjoyed this. This was a five star read for me and on Goodreads it was 4.63 the average rating and fourth with a Goodreads rating of 4.64 my rating was 4 this was Iggy this is the Georgian version this is the English version I read the English version I would like to be able to read the Georgian version I notice also with Georgian books they have very high ratings I think this is a nationalistic thing some of the books are very good, but some of the books are not so good. I liked Iggy. It's a story of a Neolithic person who starts to go against his tribe. It's about individuality and about not following the tribe. Number three, there was another Georgian book. This one, Fajap Shavella, Three Poems. This has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.7. For me, this was three stars, but this was a translation into English. And I, the problem with poetry is it's very difficult to translate. The languages, English and Georgian, are very different. The sounds will be very different. Even with close, closer languages like French and English or German and English, it's never so good to, to read poetry in translation because poetry is not just the meaning of the words, it's also the sound of the words. Another Georgian writer, Tabidze, his famous poem, Carry Chris, Carry Chris, Carry Chris, translated into English, whirls the wind, whirls the wind, whirls the wind. It's got that onomatopoeia, but it's different in English because the words are different in English. Number two on my list, so you're heading near the top now. This is The Hunted. This only had 45 ratings. And this was the 18th book in a series. It was a thriller. It was about a manhunt. There's these two prisoners who'd escaped from prison. Uh, the sheriff had instructions, shoot to kill, but there's something suspect about the instructions. One of the men is shot and killed, but the other one gets away and the sheriff is wondering why they had the shoot to kill order and what they were trying to cover up. And it also, the book puts a spotlight on the prison system in America and the problem of privatised prisons where people are arrested to fuel the profits of these privatised prisons whether they're guilty or not. And this had a rating of 4.71 on Goodreads and my rating was 4. And now for number one. And this is The Poisonous Pixies second book of poetry, the lockdown edition by Rachel Rhodes Puckett. And this has a Goodreads rating of five stars. And I, of course, gave it five stars, or else it wouldn't have a rating of five stars. And if I hadn't rated it, it wouldn't have a rating at all, because it has one rating, my rating. I can see why Ollie left out the books that had less than a thousand ratings, because this is not an indication that this is the best book I've ever read. On good read over 1,500 books on Goodreads. I really enjoyed this, but I should make a disclaimer here as well that I know the author, Rachel Rhodes Puckett. 
and this is a book of poetry and musings and it's around the time of the lockdown and some of it's very funny and some of it's very poignant. I really enjoyed it, but whether it's the best book I've read on Goodreads, I don't think so. Now, having a quick look at the worst books, I won't be going down the top 10 or <laughs> bottom 10 of the worst books. I see the six worst books here. I'm glad to see that all the ones that are the worst rated are ones that I've read a long time before I was on Booktube. Now, if I have a bad book, I'll just DNF it. I won't go to the end unless there's exceptional circumstances. And I also noticed that on the worst book, the worst book on my list is It's All Cobblers, An Essential Guide to What You Should Know If Going Into Business, which has a Goodreads rating of two stars. My rating was two stars. Mine was the only rating. Also on this list is some French books. There's like three books in French, which I read when I lived in France. Maybe the French are more discerning with their ratings, or maybe I just chose badly then. And there's also a Kingsley Amis book. The Kingsley Amis book, Crime of the Century, wasn't a good book. It has an average rating here of 2.45. It was a crime book that was done in six parts with a newspaper, maybe the Sunday Times, and readers were encouraged after the fifth part to suggest how it would end. But it, it's quite a chunk. It's quite a clunky book. It's not Kingsley Amis's best by a long way. I think what we learn from this is we shouldn't pay too much attention to Goodreads ratings. It's a bit of fun. We can have a look at how Goodreads rates some books. But if we determine our reading by the Goodreads rating, I think that's a mistake. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a like. That will help me with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.